What's up? My name is Zach Nubby here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be talking about how to get your USB working with BIOS flashback, rescue, recovery, flash restore, or whatever your feature may be. Essentially, if your MSI Gigabyte as Rock Aces motherboard stops working properly or things don't really work with the BIOS, you can't post things like that, you can resort to trying to flash the BIOS again with a brand new fresh copy or an updated copy in hopes that it'll recognize a new CPU or anything like that. Essentially, the BIOS flash feature allows you to flash or install a brand new copy of the BIOS even without a CPU or RAM installed. It's an incredibly useful feature, especially if you manage to break something or something's just not working with new hardware. However, while it is supposed to be as simple as download a file, place it on USB, name it something specific and plug it in, it sometimes doesn't go that way at all. If you've tried absolutely everything and it just seems like it's not recognizing your USB, for example, the light stays on instead of flashing and your USB isn't being used at all, what can we do to try and fix it? More often than not, there's a few reasons that could be causing it. Number one, the file's not named the right thing. Number two, the drive isn't the right format or simply it's not partitioned correctly. If you've ever installed Windows, Linux or anything like that, using a tool like Rufus, Etcher, or simply just writing an operating system install file straight to your USB, things can get messy and stay messed up. The best and simplest solution is to reset your USB or flash drive to complete stock brand new out of the box settings. To do so, all we need to do is plug in the USB. In my case, it's this one over here. I've pre-emptied this out and tried to place a BIOS flash file here. I'll simply just delete this. Just make sure your drive is completely empty or at least you have everything backed up because we will be overwriting and formatting this drive. As you can see, it's plugged in over here. This is its name. Usually you'd right click format, set it to FAT32 and click start. Then when it's done, copy the BIOS file onto the drive. But if things aren't working properly, it's not reading from it. What else can we try? Well, to start, we'll actually unplug this drive just to make things a bit easier. Then hit start and on Windows 11, open up the terminal. On Windows 10, open up the command prompt by searching for CMD and on either of them, right click and choose run as administrator. Now we have an administrative command prompt window open. On Windows 11, it may be PowerShell, but either is fine. All we need to do is type in D-I-S-K-P-A-R-T, disk part and hit enter. Then we'll see a tool like this. Simply type list space disk and hit enter and we'll see all of the disk drives on our PC, hard disks, SSDs and removable media. What we need to do is plug in the USB we just unplugged. The same one we'll be putting the BIOS file on. Then we'll hit up to type in what we previously typed in and enter to use the same command. There we go. Now, looking at these drives, 0 through 5 are all exactly the same as in the list above. The only new one is disk 7. This 29 gigabyte disk here is my 32 gig flash drive. Yes, 32 gigs isn't 29. Anyways, it's close enough. This is the correct thing, and it's the only thing that's different between these. When we know what the correct disk is, simply type select space disk space followed by the number. In my case, it's 7. Hit enter and you should see your disk is now selected. Then we'll type in clean to remove all of the partitions from the drive and it should hopefully work. For some reason it complained there so I simply just selected it again and this time it worked properly. So it's successfully cleaned the disk. Now you can see there's 29 gigs free of 29 meaning the drive is completely empty. Now we'll type in convert space MBR for master boot record, hit enter. And now all we need to do is hit start and type in partition. We'll be opening the partition manager. For some PCs, this may also be searched for with disk management. Now that we're inside of here, you'll see all of your hard drives, partitions, etc. All we need to do is at the list at the bottom here, simply scroll down to the very bottom and you should see your removable disk as the last item in the list. In my case, it's this one here. 29.88 gigabytes unallocated. All we need to do is locate whichever one is our USB drive, then right click new simple volume and inside of here we'll click next. Then we'll leave everything as default, next, assign it a drive letter, next. And now all we need to do is choose FAT32 here. For some drives, it also helps to remove the volume label completely and then click next and finish. 
Now we'll have a completely fresh drive over here. And upon opening it up in Windows, you'll see that it's empty. All we need to do is drop our BIOS files here. In my case, I downloaded these two files from the ASUS website. I'll extract them to a new folder. Then I'll run the BIOS renamer to simply rename this file here to whatever is specified on my motherboard. Then I can copy this to my USB drive as such. And when it's done, I can deselect the file and click eject on Windows 11. Otherwise, you'll need to safely remove media by clicking the USB icon on your start bar and then the USB drive you want to safely remove. At this point, you can plug it into the back of your motherboard and while it's powered off, hold or press the BIOS flash or BIOS restore button, whatever it says in your manual, and it should simply read from the drive and work properly. If it still doesn't work, make absolutely sure that you're downloading the correct file for your motherboard. If your motherboard, for example, says something like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi at the end of it, make sure you're searching for that exact model on the internet. Simply put, very small variations in the motherboard between it and other versions can cause this file name to be different and it won't be recognized at all by your motherboard. If things still aren't working, we can head back to the terminal, list disks once more, then select disk followed by the correct number, then clean, and this will simply remove the partition completely. Then we can right click in disk management, new simple volume, next. And now for the size, we'll type in something like 500 for 500 megabytes. Next, assign a drive letter. Next, and now we'll choose FAT instead of FAT32. Clean out the volume label. Next, finish. And now we have a really tiny partition in the FAT format. This should be recognized by all motherboards and all older motherboards as well. Now, opening up our much smaller USB drive, once more, we can copy in the correct named file. And just like that, things should be able to work properly when we safely eject it or safely remove media from our PC once more. Though, if you do use this method, remember, plug it back into your PC when you're done. Disk part once more. List disk. Select disk followed by the correct number. Clean. And now, inside of disk management or partition manager, right-click the USB drive, new simple volume. Next. Make sure that you have the full size of the disk selected. Next. After choosing a drive letter, we'll format this as NTFS or FAT32. Whatever you choose, you can now give it a name without worrying too much. Next, finish, and your USB drive should be right back to practically right out of the factory settings. Now you can go back to using it as usual. You're done flashing your disk, and you have a nice clean USB drive with the full file size as well. Anyways, that's really about it for this quick video. Hopefully it helped you get out of a sticky situation. My name's been Techno, here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.